What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Lithography. Crams are here with Joe and Jason, and it is time to rank our favorite albums of the year 2006. All right, we're over the hump. We're getting into the late aughts, as you would call it. Not a big year as far as newsworthy happenings in the music realm. Um, but I do think there's kind of a, this marks a huge, like definite marker point for the shift in music content and experience. I think because of some like some monumental statistics and like Guinness Book of World Records that are happening, this is a big year that's like the shift from vinyl and CD is almost entirely digital by now, or at least dramatically so. You get the... One billionth download on iTunes, which is, does anyone know? Is this trivia? It is Speed of Sound by Coldplay off of their X and Y album from a year before. So you really start to see the slide of like the record store, Virgin Records, Tower Records are kind of like an archaic ruin by now in some downtown areas. I believe this is right around the time where the mega store in um, Chicago, the Virgin stores, started to really go down or was down iPods stopped becoming incredibly more popular. Um, but that will kind of weed out eventually all of the loser music followers and start the hardcore classic rock album and vinyl community, which we are all kind of here for now. Um, so what else is going on? It's Grammys. Here's something that doesn't make any sense to me. This is U2 becomes the first and only rock band with two album of the year awards in 2006 for How to Dismantle an Atomic Bomb, which came out in 2004. So if anyone wants to explain to me how this works, uh, don't bother because I don't care. But thanks anyway. Um, we also have James Blunt with Your Beautiful is the first British singer to uh, top the U.S. 100 since Candle in the Wind. I like Candle in the Wind a little bit more than that song. I don't know about you guys. Um, and then Mary J. Blige, Be Without You, ends a 15-week Billboard run, making it the most successful R&B song of all time. Live music is in good shape here. All of the major um, festivals are going on pretty much by now. Madonna's Confessions Tour sells out in minutes and becomes the highest grossing tour of all time by a female artist. American Idol also begins touring. Personally, for me, this is a big year. This is when I really started to write my own music and took guitar pretty seriously. And for me, as far as quality goes, this was a fun year to put together. Pretty solid year, maybe like in the middle as far as the depth and volume of the 2000s. But it was tough. It was a nail biter for me because I have six five-star albums of this year and obviously only five spots. So one of them had to go, but I was on a roll lately guessing Jason's um, winners. I don't really know what to think for 06. So this should be a fun one. Who's kicking it off? I can kick this one off. Let's see, I was 21 in 2006 in college. I was poor, uh, so I wasn't, I wasn't listening to a lot of albums back then. Pretty much you had to be like a huge, massive, you know, one of my favorite artists for me to buy their album in 2006. So I had to go back and kind of pick through this year a lot, listen to a whole bunch of stuff this week. My top two pretty much set in stone, two bands that Kramser hates. Uh, we'll get to them in a second. My runners up, uh, I'm going to go with, um, it's a tough one. The, the bottom two are pretty much tied, but I think I'm going to give it to uh, Justin Timberlake with Future Sex Love Sounds. Just a good modern day pop. Uh, I'm a big, I'm a big Justin Timberlake fan. I'm not going to lie. I, I really like uh, Cry Me a River uh, from Justified, which came out a couple years back. And then he has a whole bunch of pop radio uh, smashes on this one. Favorites probably uh, goes around, comes back around. A lot of, 2006 was like the year of Timbaland. He's all over this. My, my sixth place would be Loose 
by Nelly Furtado, which is basically a Timbaland record as well. But also making my uh, top five this year, I got Back to Black by Amy Winehouse. Just a, a really great album that kind of revitalized the whole like classic soul 60s, 70s sound. Some cool production on it by uh, Mark Ronson and uh, just a really cool kind of album really paved the way for people like Adele. And also on my list, I got uh, the Scissor Sisters with Tada. Just a awesome, awesome Elton John-esque. Basically, it's like if Elton John skipped the 80s or was like his, his old self in the 80s. Really like it a lot. Uh, the top two, though, are going to be bolted on classics for me. Runner up, I got The Black Parade by My Chemical Romance. One of my favorites of the 2000s. Just lots of great guitar work. Lots of great kind of callbacks to Pink Floyd. And kind of a weird thing about emo that, you know, they, they all started out sort of as emo bands and then learned about classic rock and sort of amalgamated that into their sound. And uh, so it's kind of like punk meets classic rock. Really like it. But my number one's going to be Muse. Finally taking home the top spot, Black Holes and Revelations. It's weird. It's a little stripped down compared to Absolution. Uh, not so much heavy guitars and bass. It's almost restrained for, for Muse in, in some ways. You have the Depeche Mode, Aping, uh, Supermassive Black Hole, and Map of the Problematique. And then you have something like uh, Knights of Sidonia, which is sort of like this electronic, like Muse meets uh, Ennio Marcone. You know, it's, it's like space rock, but from the perspective of somebody in the 70s who doesn't know about like our technology, it's very like spaghetti Western style very soundtrack, uh, like a, a shootout on Mars kind of thing, gunfight on Mars, I should say. A lot, of, a lot more electronic elements in this one. A lot of great synthesizer parts. I always say Matt Bellamy's the world's greatest arpeggio uh, creator. Just every track has these awesome synth arpeggios in it, which I always love. You got the classic Chris Wilson Holm and Dominic Howard rhythm section, both fantastic. Just every song anchored excellently. And Matt Bellamy, you know, take him or leave him. I know he sort of stole Tom York's style a little bit, but he's got a great operatic voice, cool guitar player, uh, awesome pianist, really underrated in that. And every, every track is just loaded, you know, it's called Black Holes and Revelations and it's as big, you know, these songs are as big as the title. It's great, I love it. My favorite muse, I can just say that now. Yeah, finally broke through. I know some people, Cramder in particular, thought that maybe Absolution. I think he picked it for me with uh, 2001, Origin of Symmetry. But this is the year for muse. Finally breaks through. Uh, my favorite of 2006. Should have seen it. I really should have seen it coming. You really think it's stripped down more? I mean, like, it's not as, like, rocking. But I do think the sound is still pretty grand. It's a, it's a huge sound. There's a couple tracks that are sort of like, you know, Hoodoo and um, Soldier's Poem are pretty stripped down. And it doesn't have that sort of giant wall of sound that Absolution had. And nothing like Hysteria, where it's just like this, you know, ridiculous bass line that propels the whole thing. So it's, it's an interesting record uh, for them. And definitely their most electronic. So you wouldn't think I'd like it as much, but uh, I think the... It all just works on this one for me. I don't like Muse. I wouldn't say hate. I hate My Chemical Romance, though. That's fair. That's a fair assessment. I, I almost had them at number one just to upset you, but no, that wouldn't be cool. All right. Getting to my list now. I think this is a, another really strong year, not quite as strong as four and five. Compared to my list that I made in 06, my list has changed quite a bit. My top three, I think, from, from that year are no longer in my top five. Those were How We Operate by Gomez, The Believer by Rhett Miller, 
and the self-titled Ben Queller album, all of which I still like, but don't really think of kind of in that elite way that I used to. So a couple other closed calls that are just missing, 10 Silver Drops by The Secret Machines, No Disassemble by Slow Runner, Bone Clouds by Mason Jennings, Boys and Girls in America by The Hold Steady, Dog Problems by The Format, It's Never Been Like That by Phoenix. So getting into the ones that did make it, I've got yet another appearance from M. Ward with his album Post War. I've also got The Animal Years by Josh Ritter, who is an artist that I around this time I was super into. I loved him. Kind of cooled off on him recently. Haven't been a huge fan of some of his more recent releases, but going back, this one holds up. I really like it. I think the songwriting is great. I've also got Dreamt for Light Years in the Belly of a Mountain by Sparkle Horse. I love this album. I think it's awesome. It's my favorite Sparkle Horse record. I think probably not too many Sparkle Horse fans would say that. I think the songwriting here gets a little more conventional, which I think maybe goes against what some people love about Sparkle Horse, but I think it really works. Just a really beautiful record. Production on it is awesome as well. Then I've got one which there's a bit of release date controversy with this one. And after my gaffe last week uh, with Kings of Leon, it's, there's been a lot of these turning up in this decade. So it's, it's weird. I thought we would be past this it, after the 60s with all of the sort of different US, UK releases that we had to differentiate. And now it seems like there's all these like digital release and then physical release came later or it was self-released and then it got picked up by a label and was released later. This one was originally released in 2005 and then was picked up by another label and re-released in 06. But the reason I've decided to count it is because they re-recorded one of the tracks and the album was resequenced. Uh, this is when I discovered it in 06. I've never heard the 05 version. I don't know what it's like. And I figured neither of you would have this at all on your list. So I made the call independently to count it in 06. It's the Dust of Retreat by Margot and the Nuclear So-and-Sos, which I love. And one of my favorite songwriters, Richard Edwards, they will likely be appearing again on my lists. But well, my number one for 2006 is Never Hear the End of It by Sloan. Uh, this is the year they finally get it. This was going to be their best chance at getting the win. Power Pop, I think, a little bit is like comedy movies at the Oscars. They get a little mistreated. People enjoy them, but they don't really think of them as like artistic masterpieces very often. But I just think this record is so good. It's so ambitious. 30 tracks touching on just about every type of pop music throughout the course of popular music. All four people writing, all four people singing, they're swapping instruments. A lot of the songs bleed into one another. It has a really nice flow to it. It's on, uh, if you have it on CD, it's one disc, but it is a double LP vinyl. I think it's awesome. I think just the, the grandness and the ambition of it is so great, but also the songs are fantastic. I think some of the best songs that Sloan ever put together and uh, I love the way it sounds and everything about it. I think it's awesome. Throughout this decade, Jason and I have been on the same page a lot of times, but we are drastically different on this one. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, we don't, don't look like we share really anything. So, all right, let's talk about, like I said, I've got six five-star albums. The ones that I consider that are in the four and a half range I Am Not Afraid of You and I Will Beat Your Ass by Yola Tango, At War with the Mystics by The Flaming Lips, You in Reverse by Built to Spill, and The Greatest by Cat Power. Now for the six five-star albums, really hard, but the one that doesn't make the top five is going to be Modern Times by Bob Dylan and my top 10 favorite Dylan records. So here's what we've got. I've got Writer's Block by Peter, Bjorn, and John. Just, I think, a perfect little indie pop record. All of the songs are really light and airy and kind of cute and just all sound great. One of those albums where I think just about any one of them could be singles. We've also got one that Joe mentioned, and Joe and I have not shared a lot of albums this decade so far, but we're on the same page with 
Back to Black by Amy Winehouse, Poshaw, Jason and I share Boys and Girls in America by The Hold Steady, which if you would have asked me 10 years ago, maybe even, no, not five years ago, but 10 years ago when this came out, this was my favorite album of the year, no doubt. I was that guy that would like bring it on CD to party and tell everyone to check it out, but they just wanted to listen to hip hop, so they weren't really interested. I've also got a really nail biter race for the top spot, but the runner up is going to be Begin to Hope by Regina Spector. I loved this album when it came out. I really was into it this past summer, like six, seven months ago. So if we would have done this list then, I probably would have picked it. But for the most part, for the last few years, my winner is Return to Cookie Mountain by TV on the radio. <laughs> And there's a couple people who are watching this maybe that probably just got a really confused look on their face when I revealed that, mainly my roommates in college, because I wasn't really into it when it came out, basically because my roommate Sean would just play Wolf Like Me over and over and over and over. And I was so sick of it. I didn't want to hear any of the other album. But finally, when I moved out and listened to it on my own, I fell in love with it. It's an amazing indie rock album with a lot of just like vigor. It's heavy without being metal or loud. It's kind of aggressive, but it's also really soulful at times. I don't want to butcher his name. The lead singer, um, Tunde Adibimpe, is crazy good singer, uh, like a perfect modern rock singer, I would say. He does these really cool like snarling falsettos that seem like really pretty, but also like really like dangerous at times especially like on the lead off track I was a lover really awesome but the whole thing just has like this real throaty raspy snarl great rhythm section just terrifically just propelling everything forward for the most part really cool like robust tight rugged bouncy beats it almost seems like it's too modern for its own good but the playing has like more of an old school style to it it's a little rough around the edges at times and they also do a lot of really cool like noise rock techniques in the atmosphere and just like out of nowhere this chorus will be really simple with just this incredible like noise rock ambience killer bass um, songs like province and uh, a method just really cool songs i love this album so much five stars return to cookie mountain tv on the radio not a bad track on it any closing thoughts on 2006 guys for me 07 coming up is a monster year for me i like your tv on the radio pick uh that was another one that was kind of in the mix for me there is a tv on the radio album that i like more though that will be in the mix the year that that comes out i agree i am not done with TV on the radio. This year had a lot of okay albums, but th from here on out, uh, especially until maybe like 2013, there's just the worst years, I think, of, of all music. It's just not a lot. I had some fours that I like, you know, the, the Crane Wife uh, from the Decemberists is good. Sam's Town from the Killers is pretty good. Blood Mountain from Mastodon, uh, whatever people say I am, so I'm not from the Arctic Monkeys, but as a whole, there's nothing even close to approaching five stars other than my top two. And I really hate, I, I shouldn't hate it, but I really hate TV on the radio, especially Return to Cookie Mountain. It's, it was, it's my lowest rated album of the year. <laughs> I don't know why, it's just nothing. I hate noise rock and that whole style, just huge turnoff. Um, yeah, everyone out there, let us know what you think of our picks. I've got five albums in 07 that I have constantly rotated in and out of the top spot. Um, but a little bit of a, uh, a sneak peek. My pick is one that I have firmly been behind for about a year. So maybe I've hinted at it in other videos on the channel. We will see. Let us know what your favorite albums of 2006 are in the comments below. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. And thanks for watching. Stay tuned on Monday morning. We will be discussing what is popular and topical in the music world. Have a great weekend, and we will see you next time. <laughs>